Hello everyone, welcome to another video and Get Smart in Art. So I'm in the green room today and also the photography studio and I just want to talk to you a little bit about my plans for today. So today I'm going to be doing a photo shoot outside uh, on the university campus. I'm going to be using my 100mm uh, macro lens because I'm going to be photographing succulents so I need to get a lot of detail, show the depth of field and in more information so basically what that means is when I'm taking a photograph of my subject which is going to be the succulent I want to see all those tones, the textures, any natural patterns that may occur and I want to have no other distraction within that frame meaning that's what I want the background visible I want everything to be in focus and so using the macro lens is key so if you're lucky enough uh, if you're a student and you have and your school has the sufficient equipment to cater for this I would suggest that you use for any kind of botanical photography so anything flower animal plant based using a macro lens in order to capture that detail is key I'm going to talk to you about some of the technical sides of this in order to achieve better higher quality photographs and some post-production so basically photoshop or lightroom that you can do once you've taken your photos however the key and the aim of this and the sole purpose one of the sole purposes of using a dslr is that you have more control whilst you're taking the photo and less emphasis and less uh, reliance on having to use Photoshop after your, you've taken your photographs. This is going to help you demonstrate better technical understanding. So what do I mean by this? I mean using the camera on a manual setting, so not using an automatic. This is going to enable you to demonstrate to the moderator, your teacher, uh, that you are aware of how the camera works, that you're aware of aperture, so how much light you're letting in, the shutter speed, the speed at which uh, you're taking your photographs, the the overall um, focus within the... So if you're using a manual focus, for example, how focused or out of focus your image is, depending on your intention, because sometimes you may want your image to be slightly out of focus, and that's something I'm going to talk to you about a little bit later on. So if you have control over these elements and you are the one controlling the settings of these, you're going to get higher marks. So for AO3 and for AO2, you are going to achieve higher marks if you demonstrate this. And this is what I'm going to be doing today. Uh, I did do a video on using the smartphone for photography, but the sole purpose for drawing. And... Today it's about demonstrating those technical photography skills and it's about focusing on those skills and using your knowledge before and whilst you're taking the photograph, not so much after. What tends to happen is uh, a majority of students and let's say people who are keen photographers but might not have that technical understanding, they'll have a, a DSLR and they'll put it on automatic take the photographs and then do a lot of post-production, so a lot of Photoshop afterwards. Our intention, and my intention for you, is to actually sw swap that around, switch that around, so actually you're spending more time adjusting those settings whilst you're taking the photographs so that you have less time on Photoshop. And that doesn't mean to say that it's less time to save time, it's about you showing your technical understanding. So I'm now going to take a series of photographs. I'm then going to put my photos into a presentation and I'm going to record my screen and talk to you about the technical sides and the technical skills and the settings that I've used in order to capture the photographs that I hopefully will have. See you all soon. Hello everyone, welcome back. So um, let's continue. So we're talking about macro photography using a DSLR and the things that we need to consider, quantity. So this is vital and essential. It doesn't matter if you're doing uh, studio photography, outdoor environmental photography, portrait photography, food photography, light painting. The quantity is key because as I said before, 
the more of a range you have to choose from, the better quality photographs you will have. Consider angles. So I considered in the photo shoot that I did of the aloe vera succulent plant um, and its flower, eye level, worm's eye, bird's eye and high angle. What is your focal point? So I'm going to show you some examples where the focal point within the photograph was the aloe vera itself. However, there were times when I saw a bee um, doing its magic on those aloe vera plants. Um, and so my focal point changed from being the aloe vera to the bee. So this is very important because this will determine what is to be in focus, the composition, possibly the angle as well, depending on the subject, all of these things. And that leads on to composition. What is to be in your frame? So, you know, is it stating the obvious? I just want that aloe vera plant in that frame or that rose or that um, daffodil, for example. Or I want the daffodil, however, I want the um, leaves of another plant behind it to act as a background. So think about these things. You don't want unnecessary objects interfering with the subject, such as if you're outdoors and you can see, for example, a car park behind you or a car, let's say, that's not going to get you good marks. That's not going to be effective composition. That's not you demonstrating good un technical understanding of composition, framing, etc. And your depth of field. How long is it taking for that photograph to become out of focus? Is it shallow? Is it long? All of these factors leads to effective and ineffective photographs. So the sequence, as always, think of this as a formula. Write down your technical information before you forget. So as soon as you've taken that photo shoot and hopefully you've um, shot your uh, photographs using manual and automatic, write down that key information. So the key information is what? Aperture, shutter speed, the ISO, um, your focal point, so sorry, um, automatic focus or manual focus, all of these things you have to write down. I've had in the past students have forgotten to do this and um, they leave their annotations till later on and they forget and they, you know, making up that information is not good and it's not really allowed. So you have to be true to what you're writing or annotating about. So write this down, jot it down roughly to begin with. Then when you go to type up your annotations, however, I do recommend you do things in sequence. So you've done your photo shoot. If you have that time in the lesson, or if not do it as homework, it, depending on how your teacher will uh, plan the lesson, <clears throat> annotate that photo shoot as soon as you can. The contact sheet. So remember, don't delete those photographs that may be out of focus, the ones that may be under or overexposed. Don't delete them. That's you showing AO3 your recording. Selection of the successful photographs. Post-production if needed. So post-production meaning Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever application you'll use. Annotation of your edits and the final prints. So let's now go on to the selection. Um, so this was my technical information. I use 100 millimeter macro lens. My aperture range from 5.6 to 2.8, depending on where I was standing. Uh, what time was it? The time of the day is also really important. So I did my photo shoot around 8.30, between 8.30 and 9 a.m. this morning. Um, I shot on manual. I had an aperture, like I said, the aperture range between 5.6 to 2.8, depending on where I was standing because of the sun. So I will try to speak slowly, <laughs> more slowly. Um, my shutter speed was 125. However, reflecting back upon my photo shoot, once I'd looked at my photographs, I think I should have played around with that shutter speed a little more, especially when it came to photographing the bee. And the ISO range between 100 to 200. So uh, that's my technical information. Even if you just have it written down as this, that's going to give you, that's going to prompt you. to put, You don't have to put it into a full-on paragraph or refined sentences, but this key information again is going to get you higher marks for the recording and the refining. So AO2 and AO3.